Spokane listens when business talks. Welcome to Business Talks, the region's only local business talk show with your host, Ryan McNeese. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, let's get down to business with Business Talks. Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Matt Santangelo, Executive Director of Spokane Hoop Fest. Thank you yeah. for being here. Thank you for having me. We had you in last year and had a great conversation as we we're leading up to yet another great year of Hoop yeah. Fest. Matt, what can we expect this year in 2018? Well, you know, last year we had the kind of the pleasure and the honor of hosting a, um, at the time, a very hot basketball player in Kevin Durant, yep, the right. NBA Finals MVP. So the blessing and the curse is we got Kevin Durant here. He had a good time. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, what are we doing this year? Because you got <laughs> to do it. Yes, that? exactly. But you are right. That actually, I would say, it almost went viral. I mean, it was a wonderful moment. Was yeah, it that. really was a wonderful moment. And it was great from, you know, certainly from the Hoop Fest uh, community of Spokane perspective, but also Nike and Kevin Durant. You mm -hmm. know, they came and enjoyed it too, which is, you know, every bit as important. Because mm -hmm. when you talk about things like Hoop Fest, you talk about the the breadth and scope, the numbers, number of teams and players and number of courts. But until you see it, it's hard to really kind of wrap your mind around exactly right. how big and massive the thing is. And to uh, understand that magnitude, you're absolutely right. Until you really see the aerial shots of the, uh, again, the extremity of, of the volunteers uh, that are literally putting tape on all these courts until yeah. the wee hours of the night. How many... How many volunteers do participate yeah, generally? About 2,500 to 3,000 volunteers to pull it off. And is that pretty consistent from year yep, to year yeah. that that's what's necessary to make this work? Yep, that's exactly right. And there's, so that's from, you know, we talk about court monitors and marshals, mm -hmm. the men and women that are literally managing those games for those two days. But there are roles leading up to the, the weekend that, it, that are volunteer roles, you know, from our and on the weekend from our master scoreboard to our retail experience to our you name it there's kind of the the more um, shift-like mm -hmm. volunteer responsibilities. But those court monitors, I mean, those women and men that spend two days out there right. on those streets, they're the ones that make this whole thing go without question. Well, and, and Matt, I think as you're describing the different aspects of putting on a major, major event like this, uh, individuals might think, yeah, but it's a one-time-a-year event. Yeah. But this is an all-year planning, oh, orchestrating gosh. Uh, tell us tell us what goes into that. So I'll tell you right now, because what I came from my office to here to, to speak with you today, I'm literally buying next year's 2019 Nike order. Hmm. So, I mean, we're, we're before so... Before you even get to... Before I even know 18. what's going to sell, I'm trying to guess colors and things for next year. Hmm. Um, and that's what we do that internally in the office. So it, it, simultaneously today, we were working on the customization of 2018's retail assortment. Hmm. And we do that with the six members of the staff. Right. Um, and then we're buying next year's. So, I mean, we talk about, I always kind of alluded, I heard a great analogy with the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, as soon as you, if you're painting the Golden Gate Bridge, as soon as you get that last stroke done, you immediately go back to the front start and start over. painting again. And, and that's exactly what who And good is. example with how you're describing the 2019 purchases and decisions in that you're not even, you don't even know for sure if you're right about 18 because you haven't got there no yet. No clue. And then 19, you're already making the yeah, decisions. Yeah, you're, you're totally guessing on it. But that's kind of the, the volume we buy from Nike is that we have to be in their production runs. And this is how far out that they're making the productions for spring, summer of 19. So it just kind of happens. But you do, you kind of bang your head against the wall sometimes. And I'm like, I got to buy for next year? Like, I, can I just get through this week exactly. on, on what's going on for this a year? A little bit of added stress. Yeah. With such a uh, well-known major event that you guys have done such a fantastic job of with you, know, you got Bloomsday, you got Hoop Fest yeah. that are that are major iconic uh, symbols for Spokane and for any of us that live here. We're we're proud of what mm -hmm. what's been done with that. What type of numbers are we looking at right now for 2018, and maybe how does that compare? Yeah, kind of year over year. So we kind of are planning budgeting for 6,000 teams, and we have capacity for a little bit more than that. So 6,000 teams plus or minus a couple mm -hmm. hundred on either side. Um, that's going to cover 422 courts. You know, there'll be close to 14,000 basketball games on the weekend. That'll bring 23,000 plus players, individual players on those teams. And then our metrics, which we work with Gonzaga University mm -hmm. every couple of years to kind of come in and do that economic impact and that survey type of nature mm -hmm. on, on site. Um, you know, we're about a four to one ratio, meaning four fans to every player. 
So you're looking at Saturday, you're looking at about 125,000 people in downtown Spokane. And of course they all come back on Sunday. Absolutely. And then you kind of do a multiplier on the, on the financial side. And for that economic impact to our community, that's a roughly about a $50 million economic impact to the region. You know, we know when everyone's here, you know, they're buying their snow cone or they're staying in the hotel <laughs> or they're going to restaurants. All well, that adds speaking up. Speaking of snow cones, what was it a couple of years ago? We were <sighs> well over 100 degrees. We were 108 on Saturday, the hottest day ever recorded in June. Uh, but Hoop Fest, we like to break records, so we were hotter on Sunday. Well, but that was, hold on, that was a couple of years ago. This year is going to be 78 and perfect. Just so just mild. get registered. Just mild right. and perfect. Right. And you're already making the decision for the weather in 2019. Oh, yeah. We, I put, because my first year, which was 2014, it mm -hmm. rained. And so all year long, I'm doing the no rain dance, no rain dance. Well, I forgot to put a, a ceiling on the temperature. Exactly. And then it, the yeah. next year, careful 2015. With, careful what you ask for. Right. You know, in all seriousness, though, it's, it's, incredible that you've had uh just year over year for uh the duration of hoop fest you've you've significantly over time had great weather yeah i mean to choose the weekend you guys choose yeah farmer's uh, almanac that's how, that's, yeah, the way to go. that's how they decided it in 1990 or 1989 when they were planning the first hoop fest they kind of selected this weekend and it's always the last saturday mm -hmm. in june and ironically, this year in 2018, that will be June 30th and July 1st. We actually go into July into with July. our with the Sunday event. Well, uh, just before we uh, started the show, we were talking about Gonzaga, and, and goes without saying, everybody knows Matt Santangelo and your yeah. Gonzaga fame and, and run in the late 90s. Uh, what type of participation are you planning yeah. with uh, some of the – the alumni from Gonzaga with Hoop Fest this year. Yeah, so the la two years ago we started an alumni game, five on five game that featured in that first year Gonzaga only. So we kind of did a red blue scrimmage. Mm -hmm. In year number two last year we wanted to up the ante competitively, so we invited <laughs> University of Washington. So the next evolution, which this year in 2018, we've partnered with something called the basketball tournament. And for people who are familiar with the the mm. summer basketball tour, uh, that's it's a two million dollar tournament, meaning it's NCAA single elimination style, you know, bracket, and the winning team literally walks away with two million bucks. It's it's the year number five of their event, and they're bringing a hoop fest pod, which will include a team from Gonzaga, mm -hmm. a few good men is the name of that team, a team from University of Utah a team from Air Force Academy, all alumni based. Hmm. I'm really excited about the Air Force Academy. Right. I think with the tie to Fairchild and our community, I think it's fantastic. And then the fourth team, you know, every good pod needs a villain and St. Mary's has agreed to come <laughs> oh, up. So perfect. yeah, so that's it kind perfect. of, and that'll be Friday, a Saturday of Hoop Fest up at LC High School, a ticketed event. And of course we'll throw a party around it as well. Exactly. Yeah. Well. You know, again, uh, Spokane is so loyal to our Gonzaga Bulldogs, yeah. so good job for uh, tying that in, I think, in such a substantial way. What are, throughout this year, as you moved from uh, the 17 production of Hoop Fest to 18, what are some of the, uh, not only the challenges, yeah. but also some of the uh, exciting yeah. Uh, progressions that you've made. Well, there's there's two things, and especially for your audience, that I think Hoop Fest is really interesting. Obviously, we are subject to all construction. So we, um, you know, downtown with the park, certainly, but streets, new developments, the business community, we kind of get a seat at most of those tables uh, to at least be a fly on the wall or get a finger on the yeah. pulse of what that development is, which is really exciting. Well, and how that's going to affect Totally, and doing. just planning, because people, like you said, people are proud of it, and we get a ton of support to be able to execute it we need a ton of support to be able to execute it. But the other side to that is that when you talk about um, things that make Spokane recognizable mm -hmm. to the larger region and the business right. community outside of Spokane, you better believe Hoop Fest is on that flyer. You know, things like Bloom's there on that flyer, Gonzaga Basketball is on that flyer. Yeah. When you think visit Spokane, you're going to think is one these, of them. these are those things. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about what the city's movement now towards an urban experience <laughs> and what mm -hmm. that looks like, I mean, w what is your most vibrant and diverse weekend? It's hoop fest, absolutely without question. Yep, and so uh, we get a kind of a seat at the table. Of some of those conversations. How do we feature our community uh, to be a business friendly community? If you're going to bring a, a CEO or CFO into Spokane, you're probably going to do it on Hoop Fest weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to put them in a boardroom for part of it, and then you're going to walk them outside and go yeah. him or her and say, "Look what what it, Spokane yeah. can do." Here's the visual. Yeah, and so I think that that one. Um, Personally, you know, my own professional development puts me in a, a lot of great conversations, being able to try to leverage Hoop Fest not only for the success of the weekend, but the broader success of the Spokane community. What have you, uh, 
what are the challenges that you've had to overcome in terms of perception or reality of security? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, it goes without saying all around the country, all around the world, uh, whether it be uh, running events, et cetera, Hoop Fest yeah. being such a large population event. That is, of course, probably part of the conversation oh, in terms gosh. of what do we need to do here in 2018 uh, to be making the right decision security wise. Well, 2017 was really interesting because we actually got contacted by the Department of Homeland Security. Hmm. And so federal money came into Spokane, not to say this is what you should do as HoopFest, but literally they used HoopFest as a tabletop exercise to determine if things went poorly, mm -hmm. then what? So mm -hmm. it wasn't preventative. It was like, okay, something happens. How do you manage it? And we probably, we met out uh, in the Valley. We probably had 80 agencies represented huge and it was all based on hoop fest 80 agencies and so what they Shocking. learned in that process mm -hmm. is really how developed our op our site operations our crisis management plan are so we became kind of it was like this okay you know everything breaks loose what do you do with it mm -hmm. and they were like oh my gosh we actually have protocol in place that and a volunteer has developed over the 29 years of the hoop fest life just pragmatically from a practical yeah, standpoint because we had to hmm. they you know and talk about you know site-wide um you know the network site-wide smart city site-wide pa system our hmm. eyes on on social media that weekend right part of that's fun but certainly part of that security because if mm -hmm. something happens that's where we're all going to see it the first eyes on it. You know, and so a lot of those things we have in place, in addition to our partnership with Spokane Police and Spokane sure. Fire, um, you know, last year, like Bloomsday, we added some uh, barricades, you know, to really secure some of, some of the streets, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we will continue to do that this year. Um, so we're always looking to kind of revamp that, but that is certainly a, a large issue that we spent a ton of time on, just the... Um, behind the scenes and if we do it well no one knows right exactly and, you know and so yeah. that that's our job is in the well-oiled machine of hoop fest is to make sure the wizard behind the curtain is getting all the work done yeah uh, no i think it's a good point and you know clearly a genuine concern of different individuals all over the country for many many different genres yeah. of events yeah. but hoop fest having such a uh, a great reputation you guys have, have certainly done your homework on that yep, yep matt let's take a short break okay. and come right back and talk more about hoop fest 2018 Hi everyone, I'm weather forecaster and assignment anchor at Spokane Talks Online, Colin Pittman, and I am honored to be the host of the new program, Spokane's Youth Spotlight, brought to you by Spokane Talks Online and the Spokesman Review, where we are interviewing and getting to know outstanding youth in our community each month. If you'd like to nominate someone in our community that you think should be recognized, that is doing something great here in the region, or has an amazing story, visit SpokaneTalksOnline.com or Spokesman.com and look under Youth Spotlight to nominate. And be sure to tune in each month as we find the best in the Inland Northwest. The following is sponsored by our friends and community supporters at McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. McNeese Wheeler is a boutique law firm in Spokane, handling matters in both Washington and Idaho. Areas of law include business law, wills, trusts and estates, family law, personal injury and wrongful death, and real estate matters. For your full service legal needs, contact McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. Welcome back to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here chatting with Matt Santangelo, talking about Hoop Fest 2018, and talking about the you know substantial growth over the mm -hmm. years in terms of uh, the necessity of volunteers, the uh, the necessity of planning. And you were just indicating earlier in our conversation that over 80 agencies had come together to discuss yeah. security and. Uh, check the boxes that need to be checked to put a, uh, an event of this size on. Yeah. It's impressive. What, uh, where do you, what, are, what are some of the things that you see this year, kind of boots on the ground at Hoop Fest that you're super excited about? Well, I think, you know, we kind of talked about that basketball tournament partnership. I think mm -hmm. that not only for this year with those two games, the three games, excuse me, Friday and Saturday night, the two nights, um, but the chance for that to be in the future. Like, we could host a the West Regional here, which would be 18 teams, which would be a yeah. larger, not necessarily on Hoop Fest weekend, but that'd be a larger sporting event coming to Spokane. Um, 
three on three will be an Olympic sport in 2020. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Well, and so we're, large part due to Hoofest. Well, I think Hoofest definitely has a seat at that table too, which is really um, an honor. But it's a mm-hmm. different style of three on three. So we're working on having a, a single division. We'll call it an Olympic division. Sure. Uh, and it's going to be invite only, but we're going to bring in some national teams, Team Canada, the national champion from USA Basketball, hmm. to really highlight that style of play. What, and, just just yeah. briefly, though, what is the difference in oh, the style yeah. of play? So a lot faster. Interesting. So 10-minute games, it, and 12-second shot clocks. You don't have to clear it to the top. Oh, I was going to so say So those would be kind of the seconds. three primary differences then from Hoop Fest. Okay. So the game's very fast, hmm. very, very quick. Um, and that's the FIBA rules, the international governing hmm. body for basketball created that style of three on three. I actually could see that being really exciting. To yeah, watch so it should be fun. 12 second shot 12 clock. 12 seconds is fast. It's, it's, <laughs> it's running gun. Yeah. Me, at a, a younger version of me, probably would have yeah. enjoyed that yeah, game like, a lot. These are the Matt Santangelo rules. Yeah, Olympic exactly. Rules. Just fire away. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it, I think you'd indicated your team, the actual Hoop Fest team, is about six. There's on staff. seven seasonal, six full time, and we we bring one other person on uh, during this time. And of year. then I think it goes without saying, many many uh, uh, partners uh, oh, yeah. in terms of independent contractors, photographers, etc. Uh, Tell us how that works in terms of the promotion of Hoop Fest on a year-to-year basis. Yeah, so we have kind of independent contractor social media that kind of helps manage that. Obviously, that's a huge platform. That's where a lot of our demographic, you know, live on a daily basis. Um, But then we have, I mean, from your site, from simple stuff, fencing, porta-potties, barricades, you know, tables and chairs. I mean, power generators to your fancier stuff. You know, Patera is our great network provider. They actually build Mm -hmm. Spokane into a smart city for us for the weekend. And then we take it all down and put it back in the warehouse. I mean, the network capacity we have from a, from a literally a citywide sound system and the ability to do a lot of fun things that way um, makes us really unique in that mm-hmm. sense. You know, certainly the security side, that Nike partnership on our retail, customized basketballs, customized socks, things that they create literally just for Hoop Fest in Spokane. Um, good segue, you know, that tie to Nike in the store that's mm-hmm. coming to downtown mm-hmm. Spokane. Absolutely. We were very instrumental in that particular um, happening and, and, and kind of being an advocate for Spokane and the Nike world and having Nike be familiar with what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Um, it, going into the M building. Aren't going they? into the M building, yep, mm-hmm. right down on, um, on Main Street. And so I think all those um, are just going to continue to just bring that excitement. And it's those partners because, like anything, it's a total labor of love, you know, total labor of love. But they, they once you lay your eyes on it, you kind of fall in love with it and you go, oh, we have to keep this up because it's doing so many good things not just on the weekend, but throughout the year tied to our other programs through Spokane AAU, Mm -hmm. which we briefly talked about off air to Ignite Basketball, which is our outreach program was School District 81 to shoot. We to go to Vegas three on three and put our baskets on trucks and drive down to Vegas. Tell us a little more about that. And again, uh, all these different events that uh, that you're throwing out, I think if individuals would really think through how you're orchestrating each of those kind of monumental tasks in the the labor force to make that happen. How yeah. does the, uh, tell us more about the Las Vegas. Yeah, so MGM event. approached us three, well, four and a half years ago now. This will be the third year of the event in October. And same idea, they kind of wanted to, to build an event, a homegrown event in Las Vegas. Um, and they laid their eyes on HoopFest and said, we want that. We, can big, you do that? Yeah, big here. surprise. Cut, pay us. Right, yeah. And right. so um, so we partnered. We're just kind of a subcontractor for them. But we kind of literally from our registration to how we bracket, to how we manage games, to the physical site itself, Mm. uh, we are in control of. So we go down with a crew of about 20 to 25, uh, you know, our six staff and then volunteers that we Mm -hmm. uh, invite down for specific roles, depending on what they do at HoopFest. and we go down and kind of light it up for a weekend. Then is we it pack branded it all up. Hoop Fest? It, that one's called Las Vegas 3 on 3. Okay. It's powered by Spokane Hoop Fest. Okay. Yeah. But, but so we get branding. Yep. Oh, yeah. Branding Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, well, we couldn't do a conversation without, uh, as we mentioned earlier, giving Gonzaga and the Gonzaga loyalty to our community and our basketball community, uh, all of the different athletic uh, events that are going on via Gonzaga and here in Spokane and that connection to our community. I had an opportunity to be in the new athletic center Mm -hmm. not, uh, not too long ago. And just it's unreal to see what, uh, quite frankly, teams like yourself in the late nineties and what you have done for Gonzaga, for the athletic program, the academic side as well, but also for the community tie-in, which uh, is what I'm so impressed with what you've done with Hoop Fest, is you've really created a sense of loyalty from 
getting close to 20 years ago yeah uh and what you're doing now to continue to promote both gonzaga but also who fest and the yeah. broader spokane uh just so much appreciation there if people realize how much is really going on behind the scenes well i think and i think you know it's, it's really all based in the game of basketball so if we even mm -hmm. go a step broader mm -hmm. besides what's local in spokane is that there's a we're a basketball city and i yeah. know we have great events we're also a great homegrown local city mm -hmm. Um, but we're, when you look at Whitworth's success, certainly Gonzaga's success, what Shantae Lagans is doing out at Eastern, absolutely, uh, certain Hoop Fest, another example, um, and then the youth, you know, youth basketball mm -hmm. here is such so passionate. But certainly, what Prep did and uh, CV Girls did. I mean, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, so, isn't that? It, I mean, it's incredible. Extremely a national notable. championship, and and it's uh, never happened. As no, can. and uh, and Anton Watson at Prep just being invited to USA Basketball U eighteen. Uh, national team tryout so there's a uh, there always has been a great passion around it what we're trying to do at hoop fest and because of my tie to gonzaga my tie certainly now to hoop fest mm -hmm. and the broader love and passion for the game of basketball is we're trying to just bring it we're trying to be that voice yeah uh, not not a news reporting mm -hmm. but how do we continue to move that culture how do we introduce the game to the next generation how do we instill that sense of pride uh and those lessons that you learn from the mm -hmm. game of basketball and i have clearly have a lot of passion behind it but i think that's where kind of our responsibility is so gonzaga can be gonzaga whitworth can be whitworth all these pieces can be good what they're good at i want to be the organization that's recognized as the one that's kind of bringing it all together mm -hmm. the core yeah. If, yeah the seat at the table if you yeah. will and you indicated earlier that so much of what's going on even non-basketball in spokane whether it be construction or yeah. otherwise Hoop Fest has a seat at the table yep. because of the other instrumental uh, aspects that you've done. And you mentioned some of the other youth programs, uh, ones that have come to my attention recently. Of course, AAU has always been substantial in our area yep. and, and nationally in the tie in with uh, Hoop Fest. Built for Ball is a, a <laughs> yeah. recent one that I hear yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, it, I think uh, it's safe to say that through the different entities that you've talked about over the last 20 years, it, it's raising the tide for yeah. for everyone in this basketball community and the broader non basketball it, it, community. It is, and I think I think we're the right voice for it because as a nonprofit, we're mm -hmm. a five one c three. I'm not getting rich off of Hoop Fest. No one mm -hmm. else is either. And certainly basketball with all the money, especially in the youth world and mm -hmm. all those conversations, that's not what this is about. This is just about having a person that gets to an or organization that gets to be at all those different so you can connect. Mm -hmm. And you can step out of it and you can go, well, maybe you need to talk to so-and-so or this needs to become, we need to engage this audience. And you kind of have a, a feel just to, again, that pulse of mm -hmm. what that undercurrent is of basketball in the community. And so that, again, I'm humbled to, to play a small role in that, but I love it. I mean, I, it's one of the great things about being, having the stage and the lights of what Hoop Fest provides. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, more than a humble role, I'll, I'll give you more credit than that. I think it's a substantial uh, uh, visual or symbol of what's going on in our in our basketball community. What what is the best way? Even though uh, I think we're coming up oh, uh, yeah. right to the end of registration, what is the best way for folks that maybe just haven't? Uh, to either register or find out more yeah. about Spokane Hoop Fest. Yep, so website is all the information, www.spokanehoopfest.net. .net. Nothing but net. Hey, uh, huh? that works. That, that was good. Yeah, it works. <laughs> that was good. Um, and so that one, registration um, today is actually guaranteed registration deadline. It's our first deadline, but we'll keep registration open through the end of May. So you do have a couple more weeks here. Um, of course, volunteerism will take all the way into June, but you can okay. find all those opportunities specific to HoopFest on that website. And then after HoopFest, too, those other programs we've talked about throughout the year and the basketball kind of movement that's happening right. in Spokane, that's all available through website and or um, on social media at Spokane HoopFest, and that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay. Well, as you indicated, uh, registration still is open mm -hmm. through the end of May, yep. so if you haven't done it already, uh, <laughs> get out there and do it. Yep. Uh, Matt, thanks again. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming in. It's a, a real highlight in our community, uh, again, I think for – uh, as someone that has been in Spokane for a long, long time, uh, it's something we're, we're definitely proud of, mm -hmm. and you're continuing that legacy. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Appreciate you. it. Right. Business Talks is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. 
Business Talks wishes you good business and a good day.